So today we're going to start a six part series on the runner's gait. We're going to break it down in terms of the stance phase, the swing phase, and there's three sections of each of those phases. I'm going to go over specific structures and I'm going to treat those structures and I'm going to talk a little about what you'd actually see if there is a dysfunction in that structure. So the first thing we're going to cover is the initial contact when you're running and the foot makes contact with the ground. Now I know some people will talk about heel strike, forefoot strike, midfoot strike, but I'm going to get more into the actual structures involved and in what we may see there. So when you're making contact with the ground and you have a problem with the quadriceps, you're going to see differences in stride length. You're going to see the person probably try and reach a little bit far forward than they should, trying to change or alter their center of gravity there. So actually, let's get on to the quadriceps first. Oh, you already be worked on there, Mickey? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you never get sore after being worked on, do you? Oh, no, never. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's just get in there and get on the rectus femoris first. Go ahead and grab this. Now, in a lot of cases, I'll actually work on only one side of the body. In reality, if I was actually doing a treatment on somebody, I would work on both. You okay? Oh, yeah. Unless I saw a major dysfunction on only one side. If I was doing maintenance, I'd work on both sides. But if I had the time and I could work on both, I would. Good. And back. Now, we're going to get the lateral quad here. Take that in. You okay there? Oh, yeah. Right. Back. Actually, doesn't feel that tight today. No, it feels okay. pretty good. Take your foot into internal rotation, though. There we go. Oh. There, that's going to come very special, very, very, very <laughs> fast. Good. Take it back. Doing okay there? Oh. All right. Okay. Now, I'm going to get you to actually lie on your side, face towards me, please. Good. Bring this leg up here, this one down here. Now, we'd have the adductors here too, but we'd also have different sections that come off of the vastus medialis or the medial quadricep. Okay, now just straighten your leg out. Good. Good. Now, take it out. Good. You okay? Yeah. It's pretty intense though, isn't it? That's good. Okay, let's go back one more. And then as you go out, internally rotate your foot. Now straighten it out. Okay, so the amount of tension just increased considerably. Doing okay there? Yeah. So like I said, if I saw a dysfunction in the runner's gait when their foot hit the ground, this is one of the areas that I would go to first is the quadriceps. So the next thing I would want to consider on initial contact in the, the runner's gait is if they are either slapping the ground or I notice excessive internal rotation. And maybe consider the gastrocnemius muscle or the tibialis posterior tibialis posterior being quite deep to the calf muscles. Okay. So let's just get in. We'll kind of work our way around now. There's something you really have to consider that when they go through the biomechanics, they relate specific structures to having, uh, creating a problem in a specific area, depending on what you're seeing. But realize that there's also fascial connections between these. So when I talk about the gastrocnemius, it could be the soleus. When I talk about the tibialis posterior, we could be talking about any of the deep flexors of the foot. You okay there, Mickey? Oh, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to get in there and kind of work around, and I'd be getting more on the gastrocnemius and the soleus a bit, getting on the lateral and medial heads. Doing okay there? Yeah. Okay, so if I want to actually get a bit deeper and get more on the tibialis posterior, I'm going to get you to come up on your knees, please. All the way up. Good. Now let's just take it right down there. Okay, feeling that quite a bit more? Yes. And really deep though. Okay. And again, on this one, you'd watch the runner's foot as it made contact with the ground, and you see there was excessive internal rotation in the lower part of the leg. And then I would say, okay, I better check this particular structure out because I may have an issue here. So again, we're talking gastrocnemius and tibialis posterior. Doing okay? Yeah. So one thing I want to mention too is that when you see initial contact, you might notice as the foot hits the ground, we either have too much pronation or supination. And you kind of wonder what structure exactly is involved in this. It actually could be a number of different structures or the intrinsic muscles of the foot. So it's not just the muscles on the bottom of the foot, but we also have to consider the peroneals on the side. So let's just work our way around a little bit here, and I'll, I'll go on a few different structures here. And what I worked on 
would depend on the specific individual. So this could change from case to case. Just because you see one thing in terms of hyperpronation or supination does not mean that that is the actual issue involving just a very limited set of structures. You okay there, Mickey? Oh yeah. Let's have you lying your back. I'm just gonna get on to the anterior first. Because again, we have fascial connections between different structures. Some would say, oh, I only need to work on the peroneals and not the tip anterior. Well, we've got some pretty strong fascial connections between those structures. Doing okay there? Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna move on the side here, the peroneals. Take it out. Now, on you, that's a different story. <laughs> that was a bit tight. Yeah. Good. And again, I'm gonna start putting a little bit of rotation in there. Trying to get a little bit of torsion. Doing okay? Okay. Good. Move up a little bit. So again, we wouldn't just limit ourselves to one side of the body. If we have the time, we should always work both sides. Mm -hmm. Now from here, I'm going to move on to the foot. Okay, just one second. Now, obviously I would palpate, I would see where we had a tightness. Like when I'm going through here, it doesn't feel too bad here. Right there, you can feel something going on at the bottom of your foot. So I might get in there and start working my way around here. So this could be the flexor digitorum brevis, could be the quadratus plantae. There's a number of different structures we could be working on here. The adductor halitus. So it just really depends upon what I found in the foot. What I'm going to do is I'm also going to give a link to a, another video that we produce. And this one is actually for treating plantar fasciitis, but it covers all of the different structures on the bottom of the foot. So take a look at that. Uh, if you have any questions about that, feel free to drop me a note. But this is really powerful work and runners really appreciate it. Something I want to mention here too though. Anytime you work on an area and you see that something is actually tight and restricted, don't just limit yourself to the soft tissue. Get in there, start working on the joints. Go through the toes. See if you can't get a little bit of mobility in there. Doing okay there, Mickey? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, check mobility in terms of the different joints, whether we're talking about the ankle joint, subtalar joint, checking the cuboid navicular, get down, feel the area in the area. Restriction there. Good, perfect, excellent. Okay, not bad no mobility there, but obviously during a treatment session, we wanna make sure that we're actually working both sides.